Hello, Zubair. Hello, everyone, and Zach. Thank you very much. Welcome. To harmony. To harmony, yeah. We're on the second word. The second word. The what second was the first one? The second word of our discussion, uh, the second word of the book. Ah, okay. I guess the second chapter is maybe a better way to put it. But it's uh, from Said Nursi's book, The Words, from the Risale Nur collection. Yeah. The second word, which starts on page 27. In my book. If one is reading uh, from the bigger book that we have, there is something that comes between the first and the second words. Yep. We will plan to read that later, but we're going to go right from the end of the first word into the second word. So, first chapter into the second chapter. Normally, we, we follow the flow of the text, but mm -hmm. yeah. Now we're going to read the second word. Okay. The first word was about Bismillah, the name of God. Mm -hmm. So, what is the second is about? The second one is Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ Those who believe in the unseen. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Sounds let's interesting. Sounds interesting. The unseen. What does that mean? Uh, let's read the first. Pa let's read the first paragraph. I think it will give us a good introduction. We can talk about what we plan to talk about in the next series of videos, inshallah. Okay. So, if you want to understand what great happiness and bounty, what great pleasure and ease are to be found in belief in God, listen to this story, which is in the form of a comparison. That's all we're going to say for right now. See you next time. <laughs> Uh, if you want to understand some things, yep. what was it? If belief in God. Wait. Yeah, we were talking about the unseen. So the ayat, the verse says, belief in the unseen, whereas the author is going to say that the, these benefits are found in belief in God. Could it be a mistake? What do you think? I don't know. Maybe the author is defining God for us. Really? Maybe. Okay. Uh, because it is the unseen. So could we say that God is the unseen? For now, yeah. Okay. So then let's talk about, we have an understanding of what God must be in order to be God. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is one of the God's um, biggest or main qualifications, right? Maybe. I didn't think of it like that, but yeah, perhaps so. So? We, we usually say that God is absolute. Yep. I think that's, that's basically where we always start with. In order for God to be God, He has to be absolute. Yeah, absolute. The absolute. Yeah. So, if something is absolute, what does that entail for us? I guess that's the question. Am I absolute? I guess we'll nope, start nope, for me. No, 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 no. How do you know I'm not no absolute? Means. How, how do you know that I'm not absolute? If I can't cut you in half, mm -hmm. if you were... <laughs> I would like to do that too. Uh, if you were to be an absolute thing, I wouldn't be able to cut you in half. Mm -hmm. Right? Exactly. I couldn't take a piece out of you. Okay. Uh, and if while I'm an unabsolute being, I cannot comprehend you, the absolute thing, mm -hmm. in the full meaning, right? Mm. Very good. There's the key. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. It comes slowly in my mind, but it has to be something like that. So we have two two qualities that you mentioned. One that I can't be divided. I agree there. No part. No. Yeah. And the other one is that I can't be comprehended if I were absolute. Yeah. Being comprehended. It would mean that you can't fully see every aspect of me. I don't just mean seeing I, with your eyes. I have eyes. a glimpse of the, this understanding, but let's go deeper. Okay. I, when I mean see, it doesn't mean just with my eyes. You can't comprehend yeah. every aspect of me. Yeah. There are things about me that you don't see, that you don't realize, that you don't know. I have an example. Mm -hmm. Shall I share it? Yes. You know, I can um, sense the temperature between the some, some limits, right? Mm -hmm. For example, I cannot sense the temperature below a certain limit. Mm -hmm. Minus 200, for example. Minus 200 and minus 300 does not make any difference for me. Okay. They, they are, they are uh, the same. Mm -hmm. Or I cannot tell the difference between... Um, 1,000 degrees and 2,000 degrees. They, they, they are nonsense for me. Mm -hmm. okay? okay, yes. Good. So, 
uh, after a certain limits, I, I cannot comprehend the thing. Okay. Let's imagine, if, I, if we can, the uh, absolute temperature, absolute heatness. I don't know the word. Well, the, the heat, absolutely. The, then, okay, <laughs> fine, heat. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's d difficult to describe. But I cannot understand it fully. Even if there is some absolute heatness, absolute heat or whatever mm -hmm. it is, I cannot comprehend it in the full absolute, you know, real. Okay, yeah, the, 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 yeah. You, you, I, you, got you can't I, do it within limits, so then you definitely can't do it if it's absolute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I am limit, mm -hmm. limited. No, you can't understand, you can't uh, dis uh, distinguish the difference between the limits. Uh, 1,000 degrees is a limit, 2,000 degrees is a limit. Yeah. They're measured, there's a limit. You can't distinguish between the two of them. You can't see the difference between the two of them. Uh, therefore, so, therefore, you definitely can't see the difference between uh, the diff You can't see the limitless thing. The limitless thing. Yeah. Huh. yeah. So yeah. that means if something is absolute, it is by definition unseen. Unseen means uncomprehendable. Then exactly. So maybe that doesn't mean that everything we don't see is absolute. Yep. But a quality of the absolute is that it must be unseen. Yeah. So we by, by ever me, right? Le yes, by uh, yes, yeah. Okay, in, okay. In uh, in every way, shape, or form, yes, technically. But we are the ones who believe. Yeah, we, those, sorry, those who believe in the unseen, those who believe in the absolute, those who believe in God. Those therefore, those who believe that God is unseen, which means therefore, those who believe that God is absolute. A shall do you think that we shall work on the word to believe what does that mean exactly and yes but do we understand what the this unseen concept e, at, at the moment that I try started to realize the unseen concept I begin to wonder about the un, the, the belief okay but the reason so, why... So begin with what you like. Okay, because the thing is, some things are unseen to us, but they're not absolute. Well, yeah. Okay, and if uh, the wall behind me is unseen to me, <laughs> but <laughs> there's a wall behind me and it is limited. Yeah, So, sure. uh, So there are different things that, are, uh, that could be unseen yep. that are not absolute. We often talk about in Islamic terminology, Quranic terminology, the world of the unseen. Yeah. The angels, uh, future, etc. Lots of different things. Pa paradise, heaven, hell, all these things. Those are the world of the unseen. Yeah. But are they absolute? Nope. No. Okay. So the interesting thing here in this uh, ayat uh, is that it is the unseen. al raib Yeah. As in, the, there are unseen things, but this is the unseen. And the fact that, yes, eventually we, we have the ability to see the paradise. The for example. Uh, we have, just like I have the ability to see the wall behind me, we have the ability to see paradise, hell, heaven, hell, angels, the future, if we continue to live. We can see these. They're in our capacity to see. Or we might increase our capacity to see a third eye, to have a third eye and see the angels. For example. For example, yeah. Hey, the thi the regardless is they are not the unseen. Yeah, they, yeah. They are not falling into this uh, into this verse so much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, those who believe in the unseen, they're an aspect of it. I don't say that. They, yeah. uh, it's wrong, but since they are not absolute, they are not the unseen. Yeah. So uh, I think that's why the author here is saying that these benefits are found in belief in God, belief in the the unseen. Can I believe? in something that I already seen. As opposed to no. witnessing? Well, yeah, maybe. If I see that glass of tea, I just see it. There is no need to, to believe it is there or what. Okay. So, uh, the, well, I just try to follow your steps and this is the point where I came to. Mm -hmm. The only thing that I need to believe in in the real term, is the unseen. Other than that, I can witness. And somehow, in somewhere, technically. 
So that means the only thing that one can actually have true belief in is the God. Is the absolute unseen God. Yeah. I have to believe in him. I, I can't have any other action other than believe in you him. You can't witness his <laughs> that's the point. You can't witness him exactly. I can see that wall mm -hmm. and I can point it to that's the wall. I I, I witnessed that mm -hmm. behind you. And I cannot witness God himself or an absolute, the unseen, it's just like that. Yeah, it, it's not within my capacity as a created being to fully witness yeah. God's essence, let's say, his if, absolute essence. Uh, yeah, I just can only believe in him, the existence of the unseen, by the clues or the evidences of it. Okay, I think we should end this here, but I, uh, but we need to come back to this paragraph again. Okay. Uh, I'll reread it one more time and talk uh, so that we know where to start with next time. So, if you want to understand what great happiness and bounty, what great pleasure and ease are to be found in belief in God, listen to the story. We need to talk about why belief in this unseen uh, entails why why it entails these benefits of happiness, bounty, and uh, great pleasure and ease. Yeah. Uh, so we'll talk about that next time. Okay. Thank you very much. See you next time. Bye.